rolling up on St. Joseph Peninsula State Park for a second time, but not in the same spot. Enjoying the park the best way I know how. And the reason you come to a beach in Florida. It's go time. Who's coming with me? What a beautiful spot, St. Joseph Peninsula State Park. I, I stayed there about a year ago, came back because this was a different site. Last year I stayed at Gulf Breeze, this time Shady Pines, and it was absolutely beautiful. So the sites themselves were a little narrow, hard to get in, uh, but once you got in, there was a lot of room there. The nice part about it, a lot of trees around, so you, you kind of felt you were nestled away in your own cocoon. Not a lot of noise, so that was good. Bath houses were clean. Uh, had a little trouble with the water the last day I was there, but for the most part, it was good. All in all, not a bad place. Just be aware, it is hard to get around. One of the reasons why I really like hiking at St. Joseph Peninsula State Park, the trails are nice and wide and easy. Anybody can do them. And this is one of the reasons why I love hiking in state parks. Just beautiful vistas. Oh, what a gorgeous day. Ah, oh, buddy. This is the money shot. Look at how pretty it is. Yeah, it really was. This is for my nephew. He's always fascinated about the kind of animals I'm gonna see. And E, no, I have not seen any alligators yet. And to be honest, E, I don't wanna see any alligators out here. <laughs> On the road, it doesn't make a difference. I like to chef it up. So today we're gonna to talk about making ribs on the road in the RV, actually outside on a small grill. Now, normally when you make ribs, uh, for me, it takes two days. Uh, I first learned how to make ribs when I moved to Memphis several years ago, lived there about five years, took a whole year to learn all about barbecue, and it really starts with your rub. So you make a great dry rub, you wanna put it on your meat and let it marinate overnight, soak in everything, and then uh, the next day you put it on the grill, and that's where you really start to make it work. So. We're gonna go ahead and start the process today and then finish this one up tomorrow on the grill. Now the very first thing you have to do is get your dry rub on your meat because you wanna rub it in and uh, let it marinate overnight. I'm not gonna get into the specifics of my uh, dry rub for this particular rib session uh, because dry rubs are really personal and you'll learn that if you get into the barbecue world uh, and see what everybody is doing. What I can tell you though is the basis of most rubs consists of some garlic, uh, paprika, brown sugar, salt, and then that's where you start to diverge and add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, uh, and portion size also uh, makes a big difference. But basically all rubs are the same. There's some really good store-bought rubs out there too, so if you don't wanna make up your own, you can pick one up at the store and use it on uh, your meat. However, remember, what most of the ones done at the store tend to have a little higher salt content uh, so you got to watch out how much you actually end up using. So for me, it's a two-day process as I mentioned. Have to get the dry rub on the ribs. Let's start that process right now. Okay, so here are the ribs, baby back. Uh, it's a half rack. Uh, looks really good. Now we got to get the rub on. Here is my rub and you can see it. As I mentioned, paprika, brown sugar, some garlic, and then some other spices in there. You want to get your rub 
on to your meat and actually rub it in. You want to pat that rub down, get it into that meat, and really let it take hold. You can see it right there. Um, I rub a little on the back, not a lot, um, but just a little bit, just a little of the, the rub here. Uh, and again, you're going to want to take this uh, and let it soak overnight. I leave a little extra rub um, because I'm going to use that tomorrow once I wrap my ribs because that's also a part of what you want to do. So let's get this into the plastic bag and we're all set. So that's it. Ribs are in the fridge. They need to sit overnight. Uh, and then tomorrow, it's all about getting the smoker ready for the grill that we're going to turn into the smoker and hopefully make some great ribs. See you tomorrow. All right, folks, welcome back to day two of making ribs on the road in your RV without a smoker. Uh, so right now, the ribs have been out of the refrigerator for just about an hour. You want to get them back up to room temperature. Uh, and then I have some wood chips that I've been soaking in water. Next up, we're going to set up the grill. Now, I usually use a small um, portable grill that I have, uh, and it works great because it's usually just me on the road, so I can cook everything I need to. Uh, in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to take off the grill that I normally use to put all of the food on, uh, and then we're going to take the charcoal, put it into one side of the grill, take that grill off because the top part bends down and actually has a little grill there, and that's where we'll end up putting the meat. So I'll be able to control the heat um, with the charcoal and the wood on one side of the um, grill to create kind of a smoking situation. And then it's just about trying to monitor the heat. I don't have a thermometer this time, so I'm not sure what the overall temperature is gonna be, um, but I wanna cook them kind of low and slow for a couple hours. Uh, and then uh, we'll see how it all turns out. So let's get the meat ready uh, and let's get the grill ready so that we can start this whole process. So the goal right now is to get the coals nice and hot uh, and then you want to ease them down a little bit because you don't want them to be too hot when you start to, to put down your meat. Uh, right now the smoke looks good and so that's a good sign for getting everything set. Alright now come on with me, you know you want to say it. Now, once the coals are nice and hot, we'll dump them into the corner of the grill, uh, and that's where and I will put on the uh, wood chips, which have been soaking in water, uh, to give it some extra smoky uh, smell. And then once that starts getting going, then we'll throw the meat on.
So now that we have the meat on the grill, uh, like anybody knows in Memphis in particular, you let everything stay as is. Uh, I don't want to open it up too often. Uh, I will check it uh, initially, eh, maybe once every half hour or so to make sure everything is going smoothly and there's enough heat in there. Uh, but I'm done for the most part for the next hour, maybe an hour and a half before I want to wrap them uh, and finish them off uh, in the smoker. Alright, so the alarm just went off for me to check. We're going to check the grill out, make sure everything's going well, uh, and see where we are with the ribs. So for the most part, everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna throw a couple pieces of um, charcoal on it just to make sure it keeps staying hot. Uh, and then I'm gonna throw in uh, some wood chips as well uh, just to get the smoke going again. Now the ribs have been on for about two and a half hours now and everything seems to be going well. Next I'm going to wrap the ribs, throw a little extra um, dry rub on it and then cook them for a little bit longer, maybe half hour to 45 minutes depending on how everything goes. So let's get that set up. So far the meat looks like it's doing really well. The smoke has permeated it. It's uh, not gonna take much anymore. So basically it's wrapping up the meat, putting a little dry rub on there. I'm gonna wrap it up in tin foil, put it back on the heat uh, and let it go probably about another half hour, 40 minutes. Uh, just wanna make sure it's all the way through and then uh, I'm gonna take them off, let it settle uh, and everything should be good. So that's it, ribs on the road. They came out absolutely spectacular. Uh, the sides were good as well. And as you can tell, mm, I'm gonna be enjoying these. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check me out at RV Jedi, all on social media. Sorry, my mouth is full. And then of course you can follow me at RVJedi.com. Get out there and RV. And when you're out there, chef it up. It's worth it.